Hello, welcome to Abstract Sculpture of Elements. My name is Helen Vermillion and I teach at the Dorothy Benson Senior Services Center. Um, I'm gonna start with um, a screen share, a PowerPoint. So bear with me just a second and here we go. Okay, we were doing elements and the first element we covered was uh, fire. Um, I'm going to go over water. So when we think about water, um, there's some symbols that come to mind and they will be the squiggly wavy lines or a drop of water or like surf waves or even like an eddy, okay? So I took a look at some of the sculptures online uh, depicting water and we will see and we have here, these are made out of metal and they are basically um, literal representations of water. And the one on the left is like a splash of water and all the bubbles that come off of it. And then we have the nice, uh, on the right, the drip of water. So those are very beautiful and they can be worked in clay. Now, the one on the left, if you do make it out of clay, um, you're going to have to suspend the um, balls that are floating around with something like fish line. So I'm assuming that this metal sculpture is doing the same thing. We just can't see the fish line. And then on the second picture, the one on the left is probably an actual photograph of a splash of water, but this can be done in clay. Um, it also can be done in glass, but since we're working in clay, you can do something like that. Now, to do those balls of water on the right-hand side, you see, you're going to have to do those separately, and then you'll have to either get a transparent acrylic rod, a clear acrylic rod, and um, use that, or once again, these, may, these balls may have to be um, suspended by air. It's going to be a little bit tricky structurally to do the one that has a really thin line of water and reaching out and turning into a round ball. Um, you can just totally eliminate these round balls, but it's, it's pretty interesting uh, visually to see how this water is more like, um, it's, it's kind of like pretty solid and it's not as, um, it's, it's kind of like one lump with balls on it. The one on the right is very interesting. It's made out of uh, metal and it just looks like you dropped something and it made the rings. And that's, but this is like a very concentric circle ring. So um, maybe shows some movement, but not as much as it could have. If the outer rings were spread out more, you will probably feel like there's more movement going on. Okay, so these are uh, sculptures of little, literal drops of water. The one on the left is pretty interesting because it's very, very large and uh, has great impact. It's like a powerful drop of rain, or I don't think this can be interpreted as a meteor because of the color blue it's painted. But if it was red, then it would feel more like a mirror or a fireball from the sky. And then the one on the right, that, those are suspended by uh, fish lines or some kind of a string. And uh, it's very interesting. If it moves, it's even more interesting. Um, I don't know if that movement is such a good idea because then it, instead of the vertical drop, towards the ground, if it moves and it's sort of like wind chime kind of feeling. So it probably shouldn't move or be placed in a place that it's going to be hit by um, a draft or something. Okay, this one's really interesting. Um, obviously it's made out of clay, I think. Yeah, it is, it's not even fired. The one on the left is basically a wave cresting. So that's really um, has a strong feel to it. And then the one on the right is actually cake decoration, cake frosting, but it still is trying to depict, depict um, water, okay? 
And it would have been more interesting if it had white foam attached to it. And this person on top tried to make this out of clay and water. And I think it's pretty effective because you feel the movement and you feel the swirling of the water. Um, I think my favorite might be the one on the bottom. It does kind of give you a sense of flow, um, but it also can be interpreted as flame or smoke if it was upright uh, because it's on the horizontal plane. It's more, it's reading more like water. So this one's really nice. Um, I feel like it needs more than just this one piece, maybe combined with another smaller piece next to it. And here's one where it's, once again, it's like a wave, but it's upright and which is unusual. Um, maybe it's sort of like a geyser shooting up water. And then the one on the right is made out of glass and it's very nice. It's like a wave. Um, maybe the top white part is a little bit too hair-like. So I'm not sure if it's completely successful, but it, it's pretty effective. And I think uh, this is hard to see, but I think my all time favorite is this. Um, a lot of bit is suspended from the ceiling, but it's like uh, splashes of water just being flung everywhere. Uh, I think this is made out of metal. I'm not quite sure, but I thought this was very nice. Um, this is definitely an installation. So maybe on a smaller scale, this might be effective. Um, I'm going to show you a simple one that I did for an outdoor installation. I had several of these more than what you see here. And when it rained, uh, the raindrops actually, because this was under trees and it would get huge raindrops from the leaves, it actually made music. Uh, it just made all these water drop sounds and it was very, very nice. But this is made out of clay and it is glazed. So, you know, you might have ideas of your own of water. It might be more like a waterfall. I'm going to show you what I just kind of whipped up right now. So let me stop share. Okay. So I just took a slab of clay and um, I wet it really good and I just ran my fingers on it and to kind of give it a flow kind of feeling. Now, I've been kind of playing around. I have no idea where this is going to take me. But I thought it'd be interesting if I kind of manipulated it. I haven't figured out what it's going to do, but I was playing around with it and see if I can make it 3D, uh, see, see what kind of things it would do. So I highly recommend you just make a maquette, a small sample like this. And if I was to interpret this and turn it into something that's three feet tall, um, I would have to put structural elements somehow on the back side. Um, sculptures are meant to be seen all from you know different perspectives. So I can take turn this into more of a wall piece so that I don't have to deal with that um, back side because the back side is just plain. Now the other option is I can make another one and then covering the back side and swirling around it and everything. So many, many options you can do. Or I could simply keep it kind of horizontal like that. And then it can sit on like an acrylic tube or something that it won't be as visible. Okay. And that might be interesting too. Okay. And I might also do it double sided. So some of the lines will be on that side also. And if I glaze this in a very pale blue, uh, that might read a little bit better as water, All right? Okay, so that's my, those are my ideas and uh, visuals that I found online for depicting water sculptures. So I uh, recommend you go online and see what um, you seem to uh, like and then explore the various possibilities you can do with clay, okay? So thank you very much. And we will move on to a brief introduction to air. So I'm going to screen share again. Okay. 
Okay, we have wind or air. Now, that's gonna be kind of really hard to um, make a sculpture. And I looked online and what I found was it's usually something that is affected by wind or air. So you see the, the figure on the top left and she actually has a wing and then it feels like there's a lot of feeling of air and movement in this piece. So that's one way to depict it. Another way is in the person's hair. So we have the hair here. And then we have a, a fun one where he, uh, this person's fighting the wind, fighting against the wind with an open umbrella. So that's another way to depict uh, wind. All right. And then we had, here's a good example of air or the obviously the sculpture on the top left is blowing air out. And then the one on the bottom, it just feels like air because this person needs to breathe and has to have a filter or tank or whatever. So these are pretty interesting examples of, of um, expressing air or breath. And then we have some abstract sculptures. I think these are pretty effective. I think these move also. Um, if, you're, if the sculpture moves, it's easier to show or imply wind or air. However, these even stationary, I think these shapes um, kind of do a good job. Okay, let's see what the next one is. Okay, I think uh, maybe this one might be the most successful um, because it doesn't move, it's on the wall, but yet you have that feeling of flow, of movement, of wind maybe, okay? So I think that's a good example. I'm also gonna show you a very old sculpture that I did and um, it, I call it a winged vessel. And this sort of um, kind of is based on that. So this kind of gives you a feel of wind or air. And this is made out of clay. Um, and I have carved lines in it, so in pierced areas. So it does have an airy feel and it does uh, kind of implies air or wind or something, okay? And this kind of looks like it's flying. So uh, what I recommend is you make some small samples out of clay. If you don't have clay, you can always uh, get air dry clay and make some test pieces. And then um, when you find one that you really like, you can um, turn that into a larger piece, maybe 12 inches high or even more. And we can figure out how to structurally make it out of clay and uh, get it fired. And sometimes you may wanna glaze it. Sometimes um, it's okay to just paint it with acrylic paint or spray paint, okay? Or even rub stains in them. So I highly recommend you make some samples and find something you like. And next week we'll talk about Earth, and that's a hard one to try to make a sculpture out of. So we'll see you next week.